Hi book two, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie and it is time, finally time, for Seven on Sunday. I have finally gone around to doing one of these again. Um, who knows when I'll do the next one. But I am filming this really early because it's actually Tuesday, December 14th. But you know, the Christmas season coming up and you know, going to spend time with family. You know, I don't know if I'll, and then trying to get work in between those visits is, um, I don't know if I'll get around to doing these, so I just want to film this now, get this done and over with, so, but I will schedule it for, um, for the day it's, it's due, that this topic would be, which is December 26th, so right after Christmas, um, so this is the top seven releases, book releases from 2021 that you did not get to. Now, my reason usually for not getting to new releases is because I don't buy new releases. And I'm not a book of the month. I'm not subscribed to book of the month. I'm probably one of the few people who's not. And, um, so I don't, um, get new releases for cheap. And if I have any hardbacks, some of them I might have got them from the roast office because you can get like a um, hardback for four dollars at the roast office and um and then a two and then a paperback for two dollars so and then or three dollars and then a mess marker for two dollars so um that's the only reason I might have some hardbacks and so I don't buy hardbacks because they're more expensive and I'm just coming to realize I don't like reading hardbacks. I mean, I do, like I said, I do have some. Like some, um, and that's either because that's the edition that I, that they had at the roast office. It was a gift. Um, and, you know, or if it's a small enough hardback, like, um, like The Chosen and the Beautiful, for instance. That's one of the few new, that's probably the only new release that I actually bought because it's small. It doesn't, it's not that dense of a, you know, um, it's not a long book. And then, you know, I've read some hardbacks via the library, borrowing them from the library. But, um, so, and of course in the U.S., hardbacks are the things that come out first. Now, I don't know, I think in the U.K. and it's the other way around, I think. Which, that kind of annoys me a little bit. I mean, I know that Harbeck's people find Harbeck's very beautiful. And I agree, they are aesthetically pleasing. They're just not pleasant to read. Um, but that's mostly why I could I don't get to new releases. But for some of these, there are other, there are other things involved. And this first one, I don't have much of an excuse because I did get it as a gift for my birthday. I asked for it. But I just haven't gotten around to it. And that is, and I actually have it to show you guys, is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in um, her Nikolai duology. Although, as often people complain, it's not just about Nikolai. It's actually a Nina and Zoya duology. But saying, referring to the Nikolai's Nina and Zoya duology does not flow as easily off the tongue as just saying the one name, Nikolai, and he is a fan favorite, so he, that Lee Bardugo and her team probably knew that that would get people's attention, that it's a Nikolai duology, and I am one of those people who loves Nikolai's character, so I was excited. Either way, I was excited to um, read more about this world, because I do like this world. I'm not as hardcore as some people are, but I do really enjoy this world, and I'm currently, and of course, I watched the season the first season of the show on, um, I think it was, it's Netflix that it's on, and I loved it. I thought it was really good, but because what proves that I'm not a hardcore fan is there are things I didn't know that um, other fans pointed out, and the same thing with Wheel of Time, the Wheel of Time show, um, there are things that people that are hardcore fans, there are things they know about from the books that I don't remember. <laughs> um... The only series that has ever, there's only been one series where I could probably recall details a little bit more and see the differences between the movie and the, um, in the books. And even then, I, there's a little bit of help with other fans. So, anyway, back to this. So, 
This is the second book. I mean, this is, like I said, this is the sequel to King of Scars. And it picks up where the first book, where King of Scars left off. And there's a certain character that may have reappeared. Um, and I am also hoping for my ship. My own that I'm hoping has set sail. And there are, I've heard things from people that make me, that make me hopeful that I'm right. And my, this ship has been born and is set sail in this book. I do not know though, for sure. Um, but I am eager to find out. I just haven't gone around to picking it up yet. And I love, this is one of the, what I love is another, is when our backs do this. Like, I leave my dust jackets on, my hardbacks, when I do have a hardback. But if there's, I don't mind taking it off if there's, like, this design on it that you actually can see. <laughs> but, yep. So, I am definitely eager to read this. And I want to know if, I also want to know if a certain character did come back, has come back. And if, what's going to happen now, I'm, if I'm right. And I think people like this one better than King of Scars. But I'm not 100% sure on that. But I, can, I need to read this soon, so I have no excuse. So I might read this in January, uh, the beginning of 2022. So I probably shouldn't, I shouldn't say might, I should say I will read this in January. And which, it can actually be perfect because it's a kind of, it has a wintry aesthetic to it. So that's the only one I actually have in my possession. So next is one that I was super excited for. I still am. I haven't, my feelings haven't changed. It's just like I said, I'm waiting for the paperback. And that is Marissa Meyer's Gilded. I am so excited. I was so excited about that one, especially because it is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. Now, I know there are Rumpelstiltskin retellings out there. There's, um, there's one that was in a series part of a series where it starts with a Snow White retelling and has a Prince and a Papa retelling in it as well. Um, I don't know what the Rumpelstiltskin one is called. Actually, I don't know what the other ones are called. Like, something Lantern is the first book. The first book has the title something to do with Lantern. Um, and then there's, there are, there's maybe one or two others out there. But one of the things I still... One of the things I appreciate about Once Upon the show Once Upon a Time is what they did in season one with Rumple Stiltskin. I love how he was very human. He had he was able to love. He loved his son. He had a wife. He was a regular guy. Was and you know got caught. Had to be become recruited. He was this guy who was optimistic and was very devoted to his family, his wife and son, and he was optimistic, but then he goes to war, and he realizes that the only, only, he could either die, or get injured and be sent home, and then he finds out that his wife is pregnant by an oracle, and decides to injure himself, and goes home, his wife gets mad at him, this happens kind of towards, in season two, we find out this whole part of the story, and he is trying, history repeats itself, sort of repeats itself, with the second, with another ogre, War and his son. They have, the age is now a preteen age, and he tries to protect his son from going, and he takes on the power of the Dark One. He's convinced to manipulate him to take in his power, and it kind of makes him, like, have a evil sigh, like a Jekyll Hyde kind of situation. And, which I wonder if when they introduced Jekyll and Hyde, if he kind of understood Rumpel. Probably not, because no one understands Rumble because Rumble's just plain evil. At least according to what the writers wrote. But anyway, here I'm going off on that tangent. I try to stay, I fail at staying away from that topic. But, and he is also made the beast from being the beast. And I just love that, especially that aspect. They make him so human and ability to love. And the, you know, the girl doesn't, although in his, in the Rumpelstiltskin story, the Miller's daughter does marry a prince and all that, but they made up for it by, but Skin Deep, the Skin Deep episode where he's the beast and makes up for that. Like, he is able to love, he falls, he gets a love interest. Of course, that falls apart thanks to the writers. Um, like that, basically I'm, you know, that's one of my issues is what they did with, what they did with the character later. I did not like that. But, on, you know, personally anyway. I, and I admit I cannot be, I'm not objective about the show. 
But I love, long story short, I love what Once Upon a Time did with his character in the beginning. And that's what I wanted. Not, obviously not an exact copy of what Once Upon a Time did, but something similar to where he is human first. And he falls in love and he gets the girl. I don't want it to be like where the girl, oh, you know, where he's the creepy little imp. And yeah, he's human, but he's a pervert or he's completely evil or something. I want it where... He has a good side, and he does get the girl, and, you know, it's not like, oh, he falls in love with the girl, but the girl doesn't love him, because he's not a pretty, handsome prince. You know, I don't want that. I want him to get the girl. That's what I've been waiting for. So, I, long story short, I'm hoping that Gilded is exactly that, where Rumpel gets the girl, and he, Rumpel still gets the girl, and it, she doesn't choose the handsome prince, because he's handsome, and he's rich, and she will have security, and blah, blah, blah. I want her to choose Rumpel Stiltskin. I want that. Because Once Upon a Time failed me. Yes, I got it on Once Upon a Time for a little while, but then they failed me with the character. So, I want, I'm hoping that Gilded will not fail, Marissa Meyer will not fail me. Because, I mean, she's not a stranger to writing characters that are you know, a little more complex and a little dark, a little edgier and broody and stuff. Like, she's not above, she has done that before, so that's what I'm hoping for with Gilded. Okay, next, and, um, so enough time about that one. Now let's get to number three. Book three of this is Lost in the Neverwoods. And after having this long-winded explanation about Gilded, this one, I don't have a lot to say about this one except for that it's a Peter, I think it's a Peter Pan retelling. Um, and I think like Wendy's brothers get kidnapped and she has to go find them and um, she meets Peter Pan and he helps her. So it's, um, and I think I'm, that's what it is. I don't, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I remember when I heard about it, I was interested in it and I was excited about it, so... I don't have a lot to say, and I don't even, um, but, yeah, that's, so, I don't have a lot to say about that one, basically. Okay, so, this next one, I've heard, um, I was reminded of this one recently from both Reagan from Peru's Projects and Jennifer Brooks, who were reading, who were both reading the book. Um, then it's For the Wolf, and by Kristen Hanna, I think it is? I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember who did Lost in Neverwood. Neverwood. Sorry, I for, I did not get that author. I don't remember who that author was. But anyway, I think Kristen Hanna is for the wolf. Is the author for the wolf, and it's a run Ryan Hood retelling, and then you have Mia Beauty and the Beast retelling as well. I know a lot of people are tired of Beauty and the Beast retellings, and I get that they have oversaturated that top that retelling that story. They there's so every year it seems like there's at least two or three retellings of it. And I get that. I understand. But I haven't got tired of it yet, personally. And I am excited. And I think there's always new ways you can tell that story. Um, at least, at least I think so. And, um, I, I was so excited. And I think that plot is basically the second daughter of family gets sacrificed to the wolf in the woods. And, she is sent to the woods and realizes that maybe the wolf is not the bad guy after all. Maybe he's not the villain of the story. And I think there are some monsters in the woods that he protects the people from. So it also kind of reminded me of, um, um, I can't, I can't think of it. It's my, one of my favorite books. Um, not Spinning Silver, but her, of Uprooted by Naomi Novak. It kind of reminded me of that where... They have to sacrifice their daughters to this dragon. He's not literally a dragon. He's a sorcerer called the dragon. They sacrifice and he, it turns out, he just takes them and shows them magic and teaches them and all that. And they, you know, and helps so that he, they can help him protect their people from the forest, the evil forest. And I think it sounds like this is the same idea of that, where, like, he is a sorcerer that helps, you know, he is this instead of a human he's a wolf who protects actually i think he's a human because then that would be bestiality if um protects them from i think it's the same idea but hopefully that romance is a little bit better because i know a lot of people criticize the romance 
and uprooted. And I get why. You know, I understand. I, you know, it's... So there, I'm interested in that one as well. And then Clara on the Sun is the only more literary story. And it's also kind of sci -fi. It's very sci-fi-y because it's about artificial intelligence. And it's basically the, our title character, Clara, is an artificial artificial friend. And it's about her being passed down to different soul to different people and seeing the world. And it's kind of, by the sound of it, it's kind of like the movie AI with Haley Joel Osment and um, Bicentennial Man with Robert Williams, where it's like a, you know, an, an AI forms a bond with these humans and becomes more human by the day, even though, um, I think going by the sun, there's probably something to do with the sun and appreciating it. And, oh, when I typed my document, I typed it S-O-N, not S-U-N. <laughs> well, that doesn't matter because you guys are going to, the only reason you guys know is because I just told you. But, um, okay. So, oh, and that is by Kashi Ushiguru. I remember I really liked um, Never Let Me Go. I have not read The Remains of the Day or some of his, I know there's a few other works by the author. Um, and, and it seems like this Kashi Ushiguru was one of those authors where you only like certain books by the author, which makes me feel less guilty when, like, I might, like, where I try to collect all the and all an author's works, and then I'm getting rid of some of their works. Like I don't read every book by Stephen King, and I'm like I'm not interested in every everything by Stephen King. Like, um, so I like so. Anyway, let's get on to number six. Um, again, is another one that I admit I don't have a lot to say. I just remember hearing about it and getting excited about it, and it kind of deals with some lore that you don't hear a lot about. Because you know, a lot of fantasy, mostly it's either paranormal or it's European. It's European, med medieval European fantasy. And like everybody, and I do love that those kinds of stories. I love sword and sorcery and all that, and you know, um. I, I do love that stuff, and I will read that stuff. That stuff is interesting, just as interesting to me still. But, on the other hand, I kind of get the complaint where people want to see other parts of the world inspiring fantasy. And I agree. I do want that. But I also still love the other stuff. And, um, The Gilded Ones, that's another one that I know the I do not know the author, um, I should have taken some to find the to record the author's name, but I, I forgot to when I was typing up my document for this. Um, and this deals with West African lore, and I think, from vaguely what I recall, it's a situation where the girl, our girl, our protagonist, she is discovered to have this power that she shouldn't have, and it's considered like evil or something, and so she gets banished. And then I think it's probably one of these things where she finds a group of people that are just like her that also, and she discovers that she's more powerful than she realizes and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it's something along those lines. Um, and I just remember it sounding really interesting and I was excited about it, you know? I just haven't got to it yet. I do keep seeing it. It's just, there are other books that distract me. And sorry to get the author's name, but it's called The Gilded Ones. And then the last one, this is one of the ones that I'm most excited next to Gilded. And that is Once Upon a Broken Heart. Stephanie Garber has finally written another book. She is the author of the Carvel trilogy. I love that. I'm one of the people who love that trilogy. I don't get why people like it. Don't or don't like it. I should I don't get why people don't like that trilogy. Why it got some criticism because I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great story, great characters. Um, I loved both sisters. Um, it was so much fun. And I was in... I wanted her to write more in this world. So, I was actually hoping that she would write about certain... There were certain characters I was hoping to get kind of a backstory on. Um, and that is... Julian and Legend. If you read the, you know who those guys are, if you read the trilogy... Or at least read the first book. And then there was also the Fates. And they, um, all I'm gonna say is they do take on physical manifestations. 
and I wanted a story about them so bad. I wanted their backstory, and I think Once Upon a Broken Heart is that. And I was so excited when I heard about this, and Jennifer Brooks confirmed it for me. She even said that this spoils, if you have not read Caraval, you might want to read it, because Once Upon a Broken Heart, unless you just don't care, like me sometimes, um, this might, Once Upon a Broken Heart does spoil Caraval, and, um, I was just so excited about this, and, like, again, the only reason I haven't gone to yet is because I'm waiting for the paperback, um, or maybe in, I mean, if I spot it somehow, like, someone buys it, and then gives it to the roast office, donates it to the roast office, then I will definitely jump on that, but, um, and there's a chunker, just like Gilded is a chunk, looks like a bit of a chunky book. I was, I, I, you know, I'm definitely gonna wait, but if I see it, I might buy it. Um, for, but I was just so excited, and it's basically the premise of this one is where, um, this girl, her best, the guy that she's in love with, her, who is also her best friend, is marrying or, no, actually, the guy that she's been in love with has been betrothed to her best friend. And she doesn't understand that. It breaks her heart. And so she summons the Prince of Hearts to help her. And I'm kind of guessing where it ends up going from that. I can kind of guess. And it's just, as soon as I heard the Prince of Hearts, it's like, oh, th this is exactly what I want. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I was hoping for when, after I finished finale two years ago and so though the two I'm those are the two I'm most excited about gilded um gilded and once upon a broken heart and then let's see if I had to put these in order well rule of wolves I have to read in January um but as for excitement wise if I put these in order, I just wrote, wrote it down in a document and, you know, which ones popped in my head. Um, gilded, once, um, no, once Upon a Broken Heart, then Gilded. Um, Rule of Wolves, For the Wolf, and then, um, sorry, my, like I said, my document like right here so I can remember um and then the gilded um Clara on the Sun will be on you after for the wolf and then the gilded ones and then lost in the neverwoods would be last as far as excitement level um which I guess probably should, well, maybe I should have done that when I presented this to you guys but I didn't think about it. It was more about the ones that pops in my popped into my head. So that is my top seven releases from 2021 that I did not get to. Some of them I might get to this year. Like definitely Rule of Wolves. And depending on how long it takes, um, some of the other ones, um, I might get to them sooner rather than later. Takes you know takes as in to come out on paperback. So. Um, anyway, what are some of the new, some of the releases from 2021 that you did not get to, that you want to try to get to? What are the ones that you would like to squeeze in before the end of the year? Or you're going to read right away in the beginning of, um, next year in 2022? Please share in the comments below, and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, click the bell notification below if you want to notify, be notified when I post new, de new videos. And I will post the link to the Goodreads group, 7 on Sunday, created by um, Grace from G-Swiz. Um, I will post that link below in the, in the description box, and I will talk to you all later. Alright, bye!